Good morning, folks. It's been a while since we've done one of these extended episode, live screen capture and narration episodes, but today is the perfect day to do it because one, it has been a while since you guys have seen how to use some of these tools yourself, and two, the sun, the earthquakes, very quiet. Today's a perfect day to be doing this. Uh, it's just uh, weather that we're worrying about mostly. Anyway, we're starting over at spaceweathernews.com, and first off, every day there are questions in the comment sections and in emails that would be answered if you guys went and clicked, what is space weather? It takes you to a, a page on our YouTube channel where you can learn about space weather with what we call the sun series, solar wind, layers of the sun, sunspots, solar flares, and CMEs. Uh, I'm not sure what that show on mainstream news was about the uh, sun called The Dark Side of the Sun the other day. Uh, my best guess, based on that title, was that it was about the mega flare and geomagnetic storms and solar flares, things like that. So this is uh, an easy way you can learn, as you can see here over on the right side. These videos are very, very short. They're made to hit you fast, deliver all the information that you need. Anyway, we come back over to spaceweathernews.com, and the uh, primary feature, we have 48-hour runs of 193, the gold, and 304 angstroms, the red, on uh, on the right there. These are from the Solar Dynamics Observatory, and they do loop uh, over and over again, so you don't have to click and restart them. Uh, as they're about to do that here, we can see that we've got the dark coronal hole that we've been watching, uh, kind of split by the sunspot that is doing absolutely nothing. We do expect the solar wind from this to impact Earth in a couple of days. We'll come back to that in just a second. Um, we do like to keep uh, some updates here when things happen doesn't happen every day. There's not always stuff to discuss. Although this one, um, this is interesting. This one from February 12th, the Cosmic Ray Health Alert may be issued today if the calm continues. Well, coming back down here, that calm did not continue, but we've already got three Cosmic Ray, uh, three zero uh, KP bars here, which means that we have started a Cosmic Ray Health Watch. Now, there's two ways to actually get the Cosmic Ray Health Warning. One, get four of these in a row, and two, have 24 hours that average is zero. So basically, if this whole thing was zero, and then the last one was one, the average for the day would still be zero. That's what we call a KP zero day, and that's the other way to get a, a, a warning like that. Of course, we are having uh, that situation because of the solar wind. Uh, as you can probably tell, speed dropped and has not come back up. In fact, right down there at the end, we are in danger of going below 300 kilometers per second in the solar wind speed, which is quite anemic, very, very weak. Of course, temperatures down there as well. That's why we're uh, looking at the low space weather, high cosmic ray um, situation. Of course, uh, just above that, we have the two uh, X-ray flux, the three day and the six hour, so you can uh, get a closer look at any events if they ever do occur. They are both flatlined, which you probably could have told uh, just by looking up at the sun here. Really is not much going on. There's no flashing, no solar flares, no ejections, not even from uh, the limbs and the far side. The entire sun has, has pretty much gone quiet right now. Anyway, let's go over to Windy, windytv.com. Let's say that you want to come and do this yourself. Well, lots of tools over here, cloud base, clouds, rain, wind. And if you click these three lines up there in the top right, you can pull up the settings. You can pretty much toggle just about everything, uh, including the animation of the wind. Uh, and there's some really good advanced settings there. You can change the density, speed, size, contrast, etc. Anyway, um, that's sort of next level stuff. We are talking about pressure right here. And somehow uh, we got shot forward there. All right, this is the current pressure right now. Um, let me change this so you guys might actually be able to see that. Okay. All right, so this is the current pressure right now. You've got the timestamp thing there at the bottom. Let's turn on the rain and snow, and you can see that this is that storm we were looking at coming through Texas. It's probably going to come at Houston uh, in just a couple hours. Looking over in the Pacific, though, as we run through the time here, and you should be able to see that timestamp down on the bottom. It's probably going to be Wednesday before this next storm actually gets to the Oroville Dam area. Uh, going to be raining north of that quite a while. But as you can see down at the bottom, we're now coming in through Thursday, and this thing is still here. In fact, this thing is going to last through Saturday, and another one's going to follow it up and come swing right in on Sunday. Uh, let's go back to now, and we're going to check one more place here. All right, so we have this little, this little low-pressure cell off the UK and Ireland here. And it's interesting because you look at the rain and snow, and can't really tell too much about what's going to get hit. 
go one below there to the clouds and you can see that this low pressure system is really taking its convergence line yes yeah, somewhat up the coast of spain but really this is coming up through the mediterranean uh, over france and it will indeed be affecting the uk ireland uh, and those regions as we go through the day i'm going to go through here and you can see that that low pressure system it's really just not going to be uh it's not going to be making landfall it's just going to be moving north but as it does so you can see that this curving around it uh, it's really taking on france uh, the uk uh, some of the northern areas as well uh, interesting that we have that genesis all the way down in the mediterranean uh, by middle of the day wednesday it is completely separated from it as you can see here it's no longer wrapping down into it uh, that's how you use the wind map uh, if uh, you are so inclined to do so uh, sure, I can sort of hear some of you guys in the back of my head telling me what's going on in Australia, what's going on in New Zealand. This is what's going on there now. Pop up the rain and snow. Uh, biggest systems appear to be Antarctic. There, that's that one running south of Tassie right there. Uh, do still have some of the rain in the north, and of course by and by the end of the day Wednesday, we've got a storm coming down to the North Island. Doesn't look like that's uh, going to be getting there too bad tonight. But it will actually arrive in New Zealand uh, in about uh, 12 to 18 hours. So it is something to watch there. Anyway, uh, there is one new story I wanted to share with you guys today. This is pretty cool. It's from the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. Uh, they ran a simulation of two colliding bodies and found that this might be one of the best ways uh, that moons can be produced. And they actually think that after these uh, simulations, Kepler may actually be able to uh, spot them. Uh, coming next, this is the RSOE EDIS alert map. Uh, interesting to have a bunch of bird flu stuff going on. That's supposed to be on their new bird flu monitor to keep this one less cluttered. Uh, but oh well. Uh, when you come to this, you can sort of look around. You can zoom in, click whatever you might want to click, etc. Um, I usually come down uh, to the short time events because this lists everything in order. You can see when it was put on the list. Uh, right now, the thing that is interesting me is in Turkey. Uh, not sure which one of these they're calling it's probably that one yeah the earthquake they're basically saying that uh, experts have made an earthquake prediction although it's not the kind you're used to hearing uh, experts believe the chain of earthquakes that has been happening there uh, for a little more than a week would not trigger the big one predicting that they will end in about a week so this is this is another form of earthquake prediction of course uh, most of the earthquake prediction we do is at quakewatch.net. I uh, highly recommend you, you pop over there if you haven't done that in a while. Uh, but anyway, this is this is a negative forecast. They are forecasting that this is not four shock signatures in Turkey and that a big one is not coming. Interesting. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll be updating our earthquake alert map uh, here in a bit. Let me go ahead and pull up uh, the earthquakes today. Even though there's, uh, there's nothing of, of major magnitude, really, I'm going to go ahead and put the newest first. As you can see, uh, Blood Echo there, Blood Echo in Afghanistan, uh, really got some interesting things going on. In fact, another one in Indonesia, actually. Um, we'll have a lot to be looking at in terms of uh, the new earthquake map, of course, uh, that I'll post to the Disaster Prediction app uh, here in not too long, uh, and will be posted on Twitter. Uh, hopefully, you guys uh, learned a little bit about how to use the wind map, uh, poke around RSOE, not much going on today except for uh, watching the weather, and we will be looking to see if we get a, a, fourth, uh, a fourth zero in the KP chart in a row or uh, throughout the day to see if we have an entire day that averages zero. Uh, that would be about the most there is to worry about today. Um, eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.